what happens when uh, some request comes from any tools that connect to SAP HANA? So the tools can be the client side tools like the Eclipse or the HANA Studio. It can be the analytical tools like the Crystal Reports or the Excel. It can be browsers like Web ID. It can be migration tools. It can be Bob G or it can be application servers, uh, the ABAP servers or the BW servers. So what happens when request comes from any of the above to of these tools to SAP HANA? So if a request come, it comes to the index server. So index server is is the uh, true HANA database. So what happens inside index server? So when a request comes, the index server has something called connection and session manager. So what does it do? So and it has two functions. One is authentication and one is the uh, session pool. So the, its name is itself clear. Right? The authentication authenticates the users, checks for the authorizations whether they can perform any activity, and then uh, the session pool stores or logs who all are connected to HANA. So this is the first function. Once they get the authority, then we'll move to uh, the request processing and an execution control section of the in index server. So what does it? What happens here? So inside here we have um, SQL processor. So what does it do? It it takes the DML um, like insert, update, delete, and uh, etc. handle in this processor. Uh, then we have the stored processor engine. So all the SQL scripting is processed by this engine. Then we have this OLAP engine. So we talked a lot about OLAP. It's the analytical uh, processing engine. So all the uh, analysis and reporting are handled by this OLAP engine. Then we have calculation engine, so all the complex things on the calculation views which we create, uh, they are also handled by this engine. And then we have um, MDX engine and planning engine, so as an ABAPR we might not need them because MDX is the multi-dimension engine responsible for BW related um, requests and similarly planning engine uh, is also for the BW planning. Then comes this in-memory store. So data is stored here. Uh, so it supposedly is uh, RAM. So your data is stored in the row store and column store. And um, this, uh, since it uh, it is in RAM, so you 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 can uh, have the information sent in on the fly. And then finally we have a persistent layer. Uh, so but why do we need a persistent layer? If and everything can be done by the in-memory store or the in-memory database, then why do we need a persistent layer? Persistent layer is only for power outage or disaster and for backup. So, so if anything happens, if then, um, uh, then the RAM memory will vanish, right? So you do not have anything in the RAM. So in such cases, the persistence layer and data can be passed into RAM and then we can run the business as, as usual. So, so if there is an outage, you might lose some of the data which were not persisted in the persistent layer, but that's still fine. There's a lesser risk there than uh, than leaving it everything in RAM when and if the power out is there or some failure happens and then you lose everything if you just keep everything in, in memory. So therefore, persistent layer is always there. And just to let you know that in this persistent layer, we have this page management and logger and all those uh, the read write optimization which we talk about of HANA is not there in this persistent layer. This persistent layer is a normal normal layer, so it is not optimized for neither read or write. Okay, so it is just for logging any changes. So you have page management uh, for dumping and backup, and then logger is for change for logging any changes which happens in the database.